What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we actually got Jake's truck in the house over here and I uh, told you in the previous video that we're going to do an uh, introduction or at least uh, he's going to share some of the experience that he had with it. He did a truck that he fully restored and he's kind of working on the side on it. So I'm going to let him talk about it and uh, let's take a look. Alright, what's going on Jake? What you got over here today? Oh, so this is my truck. Uh, it's just nothing fancy. It's a 95 GMC. Um, it was like the first nice vehicle I ever got. I got it when I was 17. Uh, it's my uncle's. And it was the nicest thing I had. I went to the Marine Corps and I always took care of it. It's lived most of its life up here in uh, Cleveland. So I'm just gonna give you a little breakdown. I put a lot of time into it. Uh, you know, I got a big family, couldn't afford a race car, so I wanted to make my truck a little faster. I got a LQ9 6 liter out of a 2005 Silverado SS. Uh, went ahead and did the swap. Did my own harness on it. It took a long time. The build actually started in Maryland when I was living up there. And uh, things changed. So started in Maryland, finally finished it here. It's still a work in progress. I got a lot of things I got to do uh, for sure. Transmission's the number one. It's got a 4L60 in it right now. I'm gonna pop the hood so you guys can take a look. 4L60E in it right now, and it's not, it's not happy. I mean, it runs good. It's got a little whine to it. Um, like I said, it's, it's a little dirty. It's winter time. I don't drive it up here in the crusty salt, but everything's hooked up, runs. Uh, right now, I don't have AC. Of course, my, I have an ultimate plan, but I want to do for it. But this was a complete frame off. I. Uh, just did it in a two-car garage in Maryland. Took the whole front clip off, bed, cab. For the cab, if you ain't got a lift and you gotta take a cab off a pickup truck, I just used a cherry picker with the doors off. Took the seats off to lighten it up a little bit and I just made a wood brace that fit up in the top. And I just took the beam of the cherry picker and put it a little bit left of the rear view mirror, closer to the front of the cab. And that's how I was able to get the cab off, just in a little garage, you know. I didn't have anybody else to help me pick it up. Uh, the build actually started. I'd been wanting to put one of these LS's in for a long time. And, you know, everyone's always like, ah, oh, wait, wait till you got enough money. So I was like, screw that. Pulled it in the garage with my buddy Billy Gossard. He was out there in Maryland with me. And I was like, let's link, yank this motor, man. He was like, all right. So we pulled it up, started tearing everything apart. My wife, was like, what are you doing to your truck? Nothing was wrong with it. I mean, it ran great. It had 150, like 153,000 on it when I pulled the 5.7 throttle body motor. Those are good motors. Uh, they're just dogs. I mean, they're reliable. Sandblasted, bare frame. I haven't done anything to the body of this truck. This is original original paint it's been a real pain to try to keep it it's dirty now but it's a pretty clean truck uh many winters just washing it you know three four times a week waxing it multiple times a year and just keeping up on uh, any little spots of rust that you get and uh i'll go over some of the items that i used of course, anyone doing a LS swap, LS1 tech was awesome. And as far as making your own harness, all data DIY, you can get like a five-year subscription for, it's like $15, I think, or it's like $22 for somewhere around like $22, $25 for a one-year subscription. But that's where I got all my wiring diagrams and my pinouts. So I got one for the 2005 subscription and I got one for the 1995 the actual truck and I would just pull out the wiring diagrams and the pinouts I would look at the connector on the truck and you know I would know what I need uh, you know whether you're looking at uh, your gauges it was like your uh, instruments I pull it off look and be like all right and I need to adapt it to this so that was a big help so all data DIY LS1 tech was awesome dirty dingo you guys probably anyone doing an LS swap probably heard of dirty dingo those are the mouse that i got on here it went right in um i'm running a 4l60 out of a 2004 tahoe that was actually my one of my vehicles 
something happened to it and I yanked the yanked the uh, transmission out of that. Of course I need to go to the 4L80. I already have the harness set up for automatic so that's why I'm running with the 4L80 and not the Turbo 400. A lot of people are like, yeah, I just throw Turbo 400 in it. So that's still needs done and I'm trying to run a 2500 transfer case and drive line as well. Because my ultimate plan is run a single 88. Uh, I'd like to turbo it, uh, four wheel drive, you know, just keep it looking stock, look kind of sleeper, keep it clean. So some of the items that I got up here, uh, of course, the LQ9, um, I used Summit, Was it's, everyone knows Summit, it's an awesome resource for all the, uh, the fuel adapters. I'm running, I'm running a fuel filter pressure regulator out of a Corvette because I just wanted to, you know, proof of concept to get the LS in here. Uh, I got a returnless system, so two lines feed the fuel filter pressure regulator underneath the truck, and only one comes out. So Summit Racing is where I got all my fuel adapters. You can go on there. It's nice because I live close enough. I just go up and tell them what I want, and usually the guy will help you out. I got a Be Cool three-core radiator with, Spiel fans, the biggest fans I could get. I actually have to get in. I need to get my hands on uh, HP tuners so I can turn the temp of which they cut on. These fans are awesome, keeps it cool, but it sounds like a swarm of drones flying because I got kind of a quiet exhaust on it right now. So it sounds kind of, it comes on too early. The truck runs super cool. So uh, the radiator is made in USA. It's pretty awesome. It comes with uh, comes with radiator. I bought the kit. It comes with the radiator, uh, the fans, the relays, and the harness and the overflow. Overflow. That's where I want the 88 to sit right up here. So of course, battery relocated to the back. But I got my billet catch can for the coolant overflow tucked down there, nice out of the way. Um, I just got a universal cold air intake because, you know, this, this isn't final. This was just proof of concept, like I said, to get it going until uh, I get my hands on a turbo and a trans that'll hold up. If I tried, I'd just blow the trans out, no problem, if I started making any real power with this. Um, I did the harness myself. This was my first project as 100% getting into wiring myself. Everyone's like, uh, you know, it just sucks relying on, or, you know, ah, I can't do wiring. So I was like, I'm going to do wiring. So made my own harness, tried to keep it clean. Uh, kept the factory. A lot of people will just slap, slap a new harness relay when they do swaps on like lower end vehicles like this. But everything's deleted out. And I utilize, utilize the factory uh, relay box try to keep things nice and simple and clean so I don't have two. That's my goal is just to keep this engine bay looking clean. For the fans, I got my relays mounted up here, uh, right up on the core support. It's probably kind of dark. I don't know if you guys will be able to see or not, but I got the two fan relays and if you're swapping one of these trucks, you got two aux uh, 30 amp circuits right on the back of your fuse block. So super simple, super easy. Right there, tap in, you got your two 30 amp breakers for your fan, so that was that was cool. And fans running off the ECM. Like it's like the blue wire, I believe. And that's, you You find stuff out like that by getting that all beta DIY. You're like, all right, how am I gonna tell the fans? You look at the pin out for the connector or for the ECM, boom, that's your signal wire for your fan. So that's how I integrated it and kept it clean instead of just laying wires over old wires that you're not using. So you guys gotta check them out. And you could do your own wiring too. It really wasn't that bad. Hindsight, you know, wasn't that bad at all. Everything on the truck is new. Everything, suspension, uh, steering gear box, upper, lower uh, ball joints, bushings, brake lines, every bit is new. I kind of get OCD. And I was that far, I'm like, well, I might as well put new stuff in, so. There's a lot more to come with this, and you know, I got the old, uh, the stock accessory mounts. They look like crap, so once I start making some power, I'll get in here and clean this up. Obviously, intake's gonna be different. 
I really was after the block, but I went with the LQ9 because it's a little more horsepower stock. I figured I'd drive around for a little bit. Um, as far as brakes, Driveline is my next big project, the transmission transfer case and rear end. I, I got a factory 10 bolt rear end in this thing and a 460E and a 1500 transfer case. So that's just not the right equation to make power and be able to hold together on a four wheel drive launch. So the brakes, I went with a bare brake kit. I got it through Summit and originally I tried to order Order one, they said it was for a four wheel drive, K1500, and when it came, it was for a C10. Uh, so I called them up and was like, hey, like you make one of these brake kits for my truck. And they said they don't. It was a little bit of a lead time, but they went ahead and modified a spindle and got me a brake setup. The rotors are two piece hats. Uh, it's pretty good. If I want to go fast, I want to be able to stop the truck. The truck's right around 5,000. I haven't had it on the scale. I kind of put it on a diet. Took off some unnecessary stuff that I don't need. Um, you know, bumpers that I got, those are just LMC truck. I went with the smooth bumpers. I like the clean look. The wheels, I don't like the wheels, but that's what I got. Uh, I paid $300 for the rubber and the rims because these, the bare brakes, it says they'll fit on the 17 inch or a 17 inch wheel will fit over it, but that was incorrect. I found I had a set of 17 factory uh, Chevy wheels. I picked those up cheap. That's why they're on there. I don't really like them. And they got the Chevy center cap. So that's why there's no caps. Joey, he's always on me and be like, put some center caps on that thing. I don't even like the wheels, but they were clean and $300. So that's what I went with. Um, the frame, I did, uh, I used rust bullet on the frame. It's a two part. The first coat's uh, the first coat's like the silver base. I did a lot of research, um, you know, good coatings because at the time I didn't have the ability to spray. Um, at least with good equipment, my air compressor made a lot of water, so I went with that. You can brush or roll, and a lot of the areas, like in the little pockets, you can't get to. I went with that so you can jam a brush up in there and you know not try to spray up in there have a bunch running out like i said uh, all new body mounts bumper brackets everything's new uh you name it other than the frame and the actual control arms the exhaust i used because it was a proof of concept i didn't want to spend money on a like real nice uh stainless exhaust if I'm going to be chopping it up. So I just went factory, at least for the Y pipe. It does have cats. There's no emissions on it. Uh, I took it to, I took it to Backstreet Performance out here by us. Uh, dude named Eric, he's really cool. Uh, he was awesome help. I hit him up for questions on this. He does a lot of LS swap stuff, but I took it up there, had him pull emissions off and the VATS vehicle anti-theft. So I don't have check engine light. Check engine light is hooked up. I can still read codes. I got my OBD2 port. This was an OBD1 truck. So the location where the plug was actually at was able to work. So I just wired in OBD2 port, factory spot, so I can still scan codes if I got something, but there's no emissions on it. So I ran with the 2004 Chevy Tahoe because I was familiar with those because I had a Tahoe and I was like, yeah, I think this will fit. I had an old crusty one kind of like mocked up. So I just ordered a factory Y pipe, which does have cats, but they won't be staying there. Um, and it's kind of a pain. It was the split two piece on these trucks. It took a little bit of finagling, like once you put it up in there and then slide the two pieces together with the clamp. And then as far as the exhaust, I just ran, it's cheap and they're mandrel bent, three inch Dynamax. They're really quiet. Um, I didn't want this thing making a bunch of noise if it's not making a bunch of power, so I just kept it quiet uh, and ran that and everything fit pretty good. I had to shorten the Y pipe just a little bit, cut the flange off, uh, moved it forward just a tad. So you could just, you can buy stock parts for LS swaps in these trucks, they're super easy. Brake lines, I use that nickel copper. It's really easy, that Nikor or whatever it's called. Nickel copper, easy to bend. Um, 
made all my own brake lines. Stainless would have been nice. I mean, it stays a little cleaner. This stuff, it will like, it doesn't corrode, but it'll oxidize and change color. So these brake lines, I just went, I deleted uh, the ABS. There's this huge module in these trucks that sits right there. And then notorious uh, for having issues. So I made these brake lines since this is a frame, frame vehicle. I left the little coils for cab and chassis flex. Uh, I just used a big old socket to get my, kind of keep it factory looking to get my loops. And uh, I just got a proportioning valve from, I think, CPP from Summit Racing. I just threw the proportioning valve up there. Brakes work good. But I got to upgrade the rear. I want to switch rear ends uh, in the air between a 14 bolt a semi floater, six lug, because it's a six lug truck, or of course, four nine inch, or it's a little bit more money, but like the Moser, uh, Moser rear ends. So when I do that, then I'm gonna upgrade the uh, rear brakes and then I'll upgrade the master cylinder as well at that time. I, I got a new master cylinder, but I believe the proportioning valve, when you have drum brakes in the back, something's different about it. So I see a lot of people, when they do their rear disc conversion, they'll end up changing their master cylinder. I don't know if it has something to do with the pressures because you got wheel cylinders as opposed to a caliper. So that's the truck, it's got the, factory vintage burgundy interior everyone's like oh man nice truck but that interior is hideous i like it it grew on me been cruising around with it for a long time maroon burgundy it's pretty clean i mean it's only really ever been me that's been riding around on this thing no cracks in the dash yeah no cracks yeah, I mean, I religiously, since I was 17, just clean this thing, armor all. That little spot, like I said, this was a building process. I had that dash in and out of this thing, I don't know how many times. But when I moved, I had to put the dash inside, just sitting, and right there, dash was bouncing on the road, and it popped a little thing right there. So, I mean, it's old interior, but it looks all right. I like it. And... The skull, I bought it off my uncle. Everyone's like, sweet skull. <laughs> I was like, it was on there. I just never bothered to take it off. Mm. So it's, it's kind of lived its life in the truck, so I'm just gonna leave it there. Like I said, I've never done any paint to the vehicle whatsoever, but underneath uh, the bottom of the cab and the bottom of the bed, sandblasted, prepped, and POR 15 pretty much everything. Um, it's clean. I used two, two chain falls tied up in some rafters to do the flip on the bed so I could sit up on top and actually grind it. Um, new gas tank, of course I'm gonna run a fuel cell at some point in time, but that was the cheapest alternative just to get it going because I could put it in the factory, factory location. Uh, used Fregola PTFE line for all the fuel lines, trans lines and got all my adapters from Summit Racing. That's pretty much it. Uh, it's just a really, really clean truck, so now I got a nice platform, because that's the worst when you're trying to make, you know, build something nice and then busting rust. So I spent a long time just busting rust on the bottom and getting it clean. That way, you know, I'm just worried about power now. I'm not worried about rust. Mm. Like I said, LMC truck for the bumpers, they're like 300 and I think they're like $350 for the smooth bumpers without the molding. I debadged the whole truck, um, took all the molding off. I got a thing for these trucks. I got, I got a 93 2500 Suburban that was clean. That was from uh, Virginia. I got a 94 Z71 K1500 white truck and then this truck. Um, they're easy to work on. Still got some wood and it's a working truck. Yeah. Still got some wood back here. Yeah. I'll do it. I like doing burnouts when I'm going to the dump with a bunch of trash cans <laughs> in the back. It's always fun. Hillbilly in a clean truck. Doing burnouts with a bunch of trash. Yeah, I, I use the truck. I mean, it's not a show queen by any means, but it's, it's surprising. I drive this thing around and it's like I get 
stopped everywhere I go and everyone's like, hey man, nice truck, clean truck. So I enjoy it. I'm gonna break this down to you. If you guys are wondering, I'm trying to think of things off the top of my head. If you guys got any questions, comment, and uh, I'll let you know through my struggles, uh, you know, if there's something I can help you guys out with if you're doing a swap on one of these trucks or any car. But I ran with the drive-by wire. Um, eventually I switched to a cable throttle body, probably, because I want to run one of those big 102 millimeter uh, intakes. But normally, a lot of people on these trucks, the cruise control module used to sit right here, and the tack module for the gas pedal, the electronic gas pedal, it actually fits in these factory holes. But I was going for the clean, clean look. All right, I'm gonna show you where the uh, tack module for the drive-by wire. Well, you actually can't see it, it's up underneath the dash. I put it in the factory location where the ABS module sat which is to the right hand side of the column tucked up underneath there and then as far as the fuse relay panel that i did add for this truck um it's on this aluminum bracket you can see underneath there yeah i just i bent up a little bracket put some screws try to keep a clean factory look like and i mean it kind of looks like it belongs there that was my goal i didn't want a bunch of janky janky stuff so the computer is located in the factory location um, behind the glove box it's kind of a pain to pop that out but I mean it fits pretty good it's a bigger than the to the stock computer but it fit and I I ran all my wiring over here to the fuse in the factory uh, wire bundle that runs up inside the dash behind the uh, the heating heating and cooling ducts up the top so if you take your time and you just read the Read the wiring diagrams, that's it. It's all out there for you. You just gotta read them and you'll be like, all right, this is how I wanna do it. And like I said, I never did wiring before in my life. I didn't know anything about it until this truck. I was just like, I'm done with it. Like, wanted to be able to do it myself. And it was awesome. Now I'm much more well-versed, even working on like maintenance on cars and other cars, just from doing a swap and trying to make your own harness. You're forced, you're forced to, figure out how wires work. I mean, it's not that complicated. Um, everything I did do was soldered connections, no butt connectors. I used sealed heat shrink. Uh, you can go to Fastenal. It's really expensive, but it's some of the best heat shrink, I believe, is uh, it's adhesive line. So not just heat shrink, uh, once you heat it up, actually like adhesive comes out of the ends and it makes it for a really good, uh, really good bond on the wiring. Since I ran it in factory location, if I have any issues with any of the splices or anything that I had to do, it's gonna be a pain. I'm taking the steering wheel out, I'm taking the instrument cluster out, I'm taking the whole dash out to try to troubleshoot wires. So I made sure, you know, to do some mill spec soldering on it and good heat shrink. There's not a whole, a whole lot else other than maybe, maybe you'll see it again in some future videos. Uh, single 88, big old turbo in the front, clean up the engine base some more, battery in the back, uh, 4L80E, 2500 transfer case, 2500 front axle, and see if this thing holds together and puts down a decent number at the track. That's my ultimate goal. All right, well there you have it guys. Thank you today for doing this and doing a little update on his truck and what kind of stuff he's got out on the side. I appreciate it. So if you guys like some more of this kind of content of a uh, truck and maybe some American cars, let us know in the comments down below. But for now, thank you. Please like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.